the Student Engagement Officer for Higher Education and Employability, and Nori McGurr, Higher Level Apprenticeship Programme Manager. Many of you will have attended our Higher Education Career Breakfast events in November, but we felt it was really important in the current situation to provide up-to-date information on our higher education provision. We have a whole range of new higher education courses that we would like to share with you, and also our Higher Education Prospectus magazine will be delivered shortly to all uh, households in our catchment areas via a uh, postal drop. At uh, week beginning the 11th of May, uh, we are launching a series of webinars for year 14 students, uh, which we will be subject specific and provide information on our higher education courses. We also wanted to let you know that for a number of years now, Southwest College has invested in its virtual le uh, learning capacity. Um, it's something that we're very well rehearsed in. Um, in fact, we have a whole department dedicated to developing and delivering online resources. Uh, at the moment, our higher education students are engaging uh, and continuing very successfully with their courses um, and it's all been delivered online. That is something that we are confident that uh, going forward, if the need arises, that we can continue to do. And um, we will um, offer a hybrid uh, approach, um, which will um, uh, involve online learning and some distance learning as well. Um, we, this morning, um, we will have the opportunity to submit your questions and that you might have uh, via our question and answer panel. Um, and you can do that throughout the presentation or you can um, leave it to the end and there will be an opportunity to ask questions. You can uh, click on the uh, icon on the top right hand corner of your screen uh, to access that. Uh, we are proud partners with the University of Ulster, Queen's University and more recently the Open University. All of our foundation degree and degree programmes are validated by our partner universities. Um, traditionally, the Open University um, is seen as a distance learning provider and whilst this is true to say that um, all of our higher education students are um, engaging in distance learning at the moment due to the current situation, in normal circumstances those programmes will be delivered through a more traditional classroom that would be one-to-one -one teaching um, in a classroom environment. We felt that it was really important to set in context our structure and the levels of our courses uh, that we offer at Southwest College. We offer um, HND courses at level five, HNC courses at level four, but the majority of our courses are offered at level five foundation degree level. Students can choose to study on either a full or part-time basis. On a full-time basis, they are two years in duration, and on a part-time basis, they're three years in duration. Some courses also offer the opportunity for students to take a fast-track approach, um, and for those, they will study uh, part-time uh, for two years with an extra semester in the summer. Currently, we have around 230 students who are undertaking their foundation degrees as higher level apprentices, and they study on a part time basis. Um, all of our foundation degrees are mapped into uh, particular degree programmes with our partner universities, and it's normally a 2 2 formula um, two years at foundation degree with a further two years uh, to top up to degree level with our partner universities. When students are making decisions uh, about foundation degree programmes, it's really important that they research into the progression routes from their particular foundation degree path to ensure that it takes them into the degree that they hope it will. There also is a financial consideration because foundation degrees um, have tuition fees and normally speaking they are funded on the basis that completion of a foundation degree will take them into the second or third year of a related degree programme. Now, if they choose to uh, change and go on a different pathway and they have to start their studies back at year one, then they will not be funded for year one. So it's really important that they um, do uh, take those things into consideration. 
We also offer a range of full degree programmes at level six. And more recently, in partnership with Open University, we're now in a position to offer a growing number of level six, one year top up uh, programmes uh, for deg at degree level. Just to introduce you to our new course updates, uh, these are new courses that we will be recruiting onto now in September. Uh, we have a new foundation degree in cybersecurity at our Enniskillen campus. We have a BSc Honours top up in computing on all campuses. We have a BSc Honours in corporate law and finance, and that is new and offered on the OMA campus. We have a foundation degree in creative media games on all campuses with a BA Honours top up in creative media games offered on our Enniskillen campus. We have foundation degree in building services and sustainable energy in our OMA and Dungannon campuses. We have a new BNG Honours top up in building services and sustainable energy on particularly on the Dungannon campus. Um, we have foundation degree in transport, distribution and logistics offered on our OMA campus and a BSc Honours top up in transport, distribution and logistics also in our OMA campus. Just to give you an overview of entry requirements, uh, the new BSc Honours in Corporate Law and Finance on the OMA campus, applicants must have completed two years of study at level three, be in receipt of GCSE English and Maths at grade C or above, and achieve 56 UCAS tariff points. And it's important to note there that students do have to complete two years of study at level three. Um, very often we would have students who perhaps at AS level would have achieved those UCAS tariff points, but students must have completed to A2 to be considered for those particular programmes. In partnership with uh, the Open University, we now are in a position to offer a range of top up degree programmes, which are one year in duration and require successful completion of a foundation degree. Um, students will have to look at the particular entry requirements for those um, and typically um, they do have to have a specific percentage pass rate in their foundation degree in order to top up to the degree programme. In general, our, for our foundation degree programmes, applicants again must have completed two years of study at level three and be in receipt of GCSE, English and Maths at grade C or above. Uh, entry requirements in general range from uh, 32 to 72 UCAS tariff points. Um, we have, I think, for our higher level apprenticeship in um, uh, Atty Accountant, the, the tariff points are slightly higher than that. Um, I'm just going to hand over to you now to my colleague, um, Noreen McGurr, who is a higher level apprenticeship programme manager, who will be able to give you uh, specific information with regard to higher level apprentices. Thanks, Teresa. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm sure there's some people here in the audience today who are already familiar with higher level apprenticeships, which we refer to as um, HLAs. But I think it's always good to get a reminder of what opportunities are available right here on our doorstep um, at Southwest College. And it's also really important that we get this message out to students and parents so that they are fully informed and can make the right decision. So today I'm going to give a broad overview of HLAs and then there will be an opportunity at the end for questions. So what are HLAs? They are a real alternative to the conventional university route. So it's not about choosing work over continuing with your, edu your higher education. It's about being able to combine the two and end up in the same place, just taking a different route. So really they're suitable for someone who would like to continue with their study at, um, after A-levels or BTEC, but would prefer the more practical hands-on approach while studying for their higher education uh, qualification. So basically, instead of sitting in the classroom five days a week, the HLAs are out working in industry from day one and then attend the college, usually a day a week, to study their higher level qualification. So they're based on a partnership between uh, an employer, Southwest College and the higher level apprentice. And this partnership combines employment with high quality training and then allows the HLA to achieve a recognised higher education qualification whilst gaining vital, relevant um, industry experience. So what are the study? So mainly at Southwest College, they study a level five foundation degree that Teresa referred to earlier. So it's exactly the same foundation degree that they can study at a, as a full time or part time student. They're just doing it as a HLA. 
The only exception to the foundation degree route is a HLA in accountancy, um, where they study the professional accounting technician course and no one is anti. And it's also a level five qualification. So to put the levels in context, um, A levels or BTEC are level three qualification. Your degree is a level six qualification and the foundation degree is a level five qualification. And that's equivalent to the first year of your degree course, which means if they choose to continue, it would go directly into the second year of the degree course. So the foundation degrees um, are all accredited by one of our three local universities. That's Ulster, Queen's or Open University. This means that if someone uh, chooses to study, say, a HLA in civil engineering, and they complete the course successfully, they will graduate with an Ulster, an Ulster University foundation degree in civil engineering, not a Southwest College. So exactly the same thing as if they travelled to Jordanstown and sat in the class, um, except they just go up the road to Dungannon or Enniskillen or Oma, uh, but they end up with their Ulster University foundation degree. So the, the duration of the courses differ from depending on your choice, and it can range anything between two to three years. Some of them are two years, some of them are two and a half, and some of them are three. And HLAs are normally expected to attend the college one day a week. But again, this can change from course to course. So what makes someone um, eligible for the course? As I said earlier, HLAs mainly study a foundation degree. So in the first instance, as with all the, the modes of study at foundation degree level, they must have a minimum of GCSE English and Maths at grade C or above, and then usually four other GCSEs. Now, some courses will accept uh, an equivalent for the Maths and English, but others won't, so you, you have to be careful uh, to watch out for that. Um, they, they will also have to meet the UCAS entry requirements of the programme, and again, these can change from course to course. So it's really important to be aware of the exact entry requirements for the HLA option, and these can even differ from the part-time option, the same subject area. So to give you an example, to study a HLA foundation degree in business as a full time or a part time student, you need 64 UCAS points, whereas to study as a HLA, you need 72. And the main reason for this is that a HLA needs really needs to be at the top of their game as they're working full time, studying at the college one day a week and then completing assignments and coursework in their own time. So, so it can be tough going. So as well as meeting uh, all those academic entry requirements, they will then have to meet the specific HLA eligibility criteria. So to study as a HLA, they must be employed by a Northern Ireland based private uh, company. It can't be a public one. Uh, for example, they couldn't uh, work with the local district council or, or indeed the, not with ourselves either as a college. And employment must be relevant to the area of study that they've chosen. So for example, if they decide to do construction, then they must be employed in the construction sector. And then the employer must agree to take them on as an employee. So they're not a placement student, they're an employee. Uh, and they're taken on on a full time basis for the duration of the programme. And then the employer agrees to release them on full pay for the period of study at the college. So, for example, say they were working on a county practice and they work four days a week for seven hours and then attend the college one day for seven hours. Then they get paid for 35, 35 hours. They get paid for the five days. And if the employer decides not to pay them for the day they're at college, then this means they're not eligible for the HLA program, so th there's no point. Um, they also must be get, get a salary which is commensurate with the job that they do, but it, it must be at least basic minimum wage, so that's different from other apprenticeships. They're not uh, paid an apprenticeship rate, they're paid at least basic min minimum wage or above, and we find that all, very often employers will take them on um, on the basic minimum wage, and then depending on how good they are, um, they'll increase their salary, but that's something that's out of our control. That's totally between the employee and the uh, employer. So, and I, so whether as they're an employee of the company um, and entitled to the same rights as any other employee, they'll, they'll not be entitled to college holidays, uh, but would get annual leave, which is agreed with them between them and the, and the employer. So all the time they have to think in terms of being an employee of the company and not a student. They must also be newly appointed to the job or if they're an existing employee, and I'll talk about that later, they must have a significant change uh, in their job role. So this is not about someone who's been working for a number of years and now decides to get a free higher level qualification. It's about someone who really wants to progress up the ladder uh, by achieving their higher level qualification. Now the onus is on the individual to find their employment, but we do all that we can to support them in this process. So for example, if we know of any employer who wants to employ HLA, then we'll advertise that on our website. So one of the main questions is always asked is how much does this cost? And Unbelievably, there's absolutely no cost to the individual. They don't pay fees to the college or the university. And because they're an employee and not a student, they have no student debt, but instead they get paid throughout the whole programme. So you ask what are the benefits of studying as a HLA or why would somebody choose this option? Well, I can tell you there are many, many benefits. 
HLA is get paid a salary while they work and study. They gain a higher level qualification at no cost. They're not entitled to a student loan, so as a result of no student debt. But I would have to say that the most significant benefit of all is not only are they achieving a higher level qualification at no personal cost, they're developing higher level skill set, which industry so desperately needs. And in the meantime, they're increasing their earning capacity in the long term because they've developed expert skills along with their higher level qualification. Can you imagine how competitive they're going to be with their level of experience and are competing for jobs against a student coming directly out of university with limited experience? On top of all of this, because employers invested in the HLA, they will usually want to retain them as an employee after the programme has ended. So the opportunities are enormous. For example, I had an employer who contacted me recently um, and was willing to pay a salary of 30 plus, 30K plus to a HLA when they completed their two and a half year course. Now, of course, that was, that was if they proved to be the right employee for the company. So I mean, that's a fantastic opportunity. How do they apply? Applications are currently open and, and Teresa had uh, referred to how you do it there earlier. Um, and the easiest way to apply is online, but we also still accept paper application forms, which can be downloaded from the website. And there's details on the website about how you go about applying. Now, it's really, it's totally understandable at this point that students don't know the results or indeed highly unlikely that they will have secured employment. But please, please don't let that put anyone off applying. It's fine to go ahead um, and apply at this point, pending the outcome of both. However, they will have to secure the employment to be accepted on the HLA course in September, and they have from now until then to find a job. Now, I'm frequently asked, do we have a list of employers who take on HLAs? Um, and the short answer is we don't, because these are jobs, not placements. But what we can do is provide a list of employers who have participated in the past, but there's no guarantee that they will definitely employ an apprentice each year. Now, if someone has trouble getting employment secured for September, could, which could very well be the case in these uncertain times, I would definitely urge them to apply for the part-time mode of study, pay their fees, and then if they're fortunate enough to secure employment within a short space of time, we will do all that we can to have them transferred across to the HLA option. But, you know, it's, at least they won't have missed out on their higher education course doing, uh, choosing that way. But I would have to stress now, it's not always possible to transfer the, uh, someone across for various different reasons. Um, I mean, maybe the class is full up or whatever. So I would really urge them to seek employment at the earliest possible time. And if they're lucky enough and successful in finding employment, they can actually then start work for that employer as a HLA anytime over the summer. They don't have to wait until September. And the advice I always give to potential HLA applicants is to complete a CV with as much detail as possible, making sure that they put everything in there that makes them stand out from other applicants. For example, if they have a part-time job, or maybe tell the employer why they've chosen to study engineering or whatever course they've selected. Make the employer want to choose them um, over, over others. Then they need to send their CV out to a number of relevant companies. And they shouldn't be disheartened if the employer doesn't come back immediately. They may well have to follow this up with a phone call or two to the employer, because that CV could well um, intentionally have slipped down the employer's priority list. So it's always good to follow them up. I wouldn't say pester them, but certainly follow it up with, with a few phone calls. I also ask them then to send me a copy of the CV and I will ensure that I will make this available to any, any employer who contacts the college interested in employing a HLA. So what, what have we available at the college? And we have nine, currently have nine different ones at the college and they're across a broad range of um, subject areas. So currently we have um, accountancy, business, computing, um, building services, construction engineering, civil engineering, energy, environment and sustainability, and manufacturing and mechatronic engineering. And there's a lot more details such as the course contacts, course modules, course duration, etc., on the website. So HLAs are no longer new. They've been around now since 2014, but we've noticed a steady increase year on year in the number of A-level students choosing this route to gain their higher level quali qualification instead of going directly um, into university. In fact, we currently have 230 HLAs in the college and almost 70% are direct high achieving level three students. I think though that is really important to know that it's not just for those students, HLA is a very flexible programme, uh, it's not just for school leavers. So it also suits someone who's already out working in industry um, and would really like to upskill. Now for those existing employees to be eligible, they will have to have a significant change in their job role. Uh, and there may well be an instance where these people don't meet the UCAS entry requirements, maybe say left school without the right qualification or whatever. So in this instance, we use a process known as APEL, to see if they're eligible, which takes into consideration all the work experience to date. 
And it doesn't stop there. They're also suitable for someone who would like to have complete career change. To give you an example, if someone qualified as an engineer and realised they weren't happy with their choice, they could then change to computing, for example, or business or whatever, and complete their higher education course as a HLA, so long as they meet all the other entry criteria. Um, now, we, we totally understand that this is a very challenging time, and particularly now there's such uncertainty out there, mainly with the prospect of finding employment. So I would really like to take this opportunity to reassure everyone that we at the college will do all that we can to support everyone in this process of becoming a HLA. So basically, to sum up, if someone's just completed A-levels or BTEC and they're a well-organised person and able to cope with the demands of work and study at higher level, then this is a perfect, perfect opportunity for them to achieve their higher education qualification near to home with no cost whilst developing high level skills and knowledge that industry is really crying out for. So thank you very much for taking time to listen out to me this morning and I really hope you found it beneficial. If you didn't learn anything new, then hopefully it was useful to get a refresher. Um, if you have any queries at all regarding HLAs, please feel free to give me a shout at noreen.mcgur at swc.ac.uk. Thank you, Noreen. Um, well, we are going to now look at why you study at Southwest College and what are the benefits? Well, the obvious one that is it's on your doorstep. Um, Southwest College courses are higher education courses are taught by um, qualified lecturers who have industry experience, and that's important because they, when they're teaching, can then link back to their experiences from industry. Uh, Southwest College uses similar facilities and equipment to those that you would find in industry. Um, a key element of our foundation degree programmes are our work based learning opportunities, which enable students to go out um, and work with companies and develop very valuable employability skills. Our class sizes um, at Southwest College are uh, a good deal smaller in comparison to those that you would find at other higher education academic settings. For example, students may be at university in a lecture theatre with around 100 other students. Um, generally speaking, our class sizes are no more than around 18 um, and our lectures very much have an open door policy for students. Um, uh, they will get to know them because the, the class sizes are smaller. They will get to know them um, and be able to provide um, additional support to them. Southwest College also has a, a dedicated uh, student support services for our higher education students. Uh, we can provide information on finance, welfare, careers guidance, learning support and counselling. And we also have a dedicated uh, health and wellbeing officer um, who is very proactive in providing a lot of, of um, seminars um, and um, opportunities for our higher education students. Studying near to home allows students to continue with their sporting um, and community interests um, they, um, and they uh, um, remain close to family. They also um, will be able to continue with any part time employment that they may have. Um, if a student uh, studies a foundation degree uh, at Southwest College, they complete that in two years and now with our top up opportunities, they could complete their foundation degree in the very same time that it would take them if they went off to university. So they could complete their full degree within a three year period. Um, students also have the opportunity to uh, apply for a wide range of bursaries and scholarship opportunities. And we find that because our numbers are smaller um, and there's smaller numbers applying for those bursaries, that quite a lot of our students are successful um, in securing that funding. Today, we're really excited uh, to launch um, our Southwest College Chief Executives Scholarship Award. Uh, this is a new um, award um, and is part of our widening um, access and participating, participation for partner schools. We're launching three new fully funded higher education scholarships. Each scholarship has a value of between £9,500 and £12,000 um, and covers the successful applicants full time tuition fees for the three years of their study. They are subject specific and are offered. There's a foundation degree in 
they can apply for those who are applying for the foundation degree in computing and BSc honours top up in computing um, in the Dungannon campus, the foundation degree in creative media production and BA honours top up in creative media and then a skilling campus and also then the new BSc in corporate law and finance in the OMA campus. Um, we will be sending out more comprehensive, comprehensive information regard to these scholarships um, and the eligibility criteria and the closing date, which is the 1st of July, but we will send all of that information out to you shortly. One of the major benefits of um, studying uh, close to home at your further education college is the cost. And the Association of Colleges have revealed that higher education stud students who study in FE colleges are likely to leave college with around £17,500 less debt than if they had studied their qualification at university. We therefore felt that it was really important to give you a comprehensive overview of um, our tuition fees. Full-time honours full honors degree programmes will cost £4,395. Uh, full-time foundation degree programmes, £2,600. Um, higher national diplomas on a full-time basis, £2,600. For our part-time um, honours degree, um, they are uh, 295 pounds per module and generally students study four modules per year or if they're undertaking the fast track option that would be six modules per year. Foundation degrees um, through University of Ulster, Queen's and Open University are 250 pounds per module and again it's four modules per year um, and if they're undertaking the, uh, the um, fast track option that would be a thousand pounds per year. Our higher national diplomas cost £630 per year, our higher national certificate at £610 and our higher national certificate fast track one year £910. So when you take into consideration that uh, universities here in Northern Ireland full time honours degree costs £4,395 per year and in the rest of the UK, uh, they are significantly higher at 9, 000, over £9,000 per year. You can see that there are significant savings to be made. One of the major um, expenses for a student um, going off to university are their accommodation costs. And they average around £120 uh, per uh, month for students. So again, students studying at home can make significant savings um, in regard to that. So how do you apply for our higher, higher education courses? Well, we want to give a very clear message that we are very much open for applications. It is not too late at this stage and all of our applications for both our full and part time courses have now gone online. Um, it's a very simple process. Uh, students go on to um, the college website. They select the course that they're interested in, um, ensuring that they select the campus that they're interested in and they put it into their basket very much they were like they were shopping. They're then required to go in um, and register and enter their personal details. Um, we would just say that it is important if you're advising students to let them know that they can put in um, their a number of course choices and they should put them in order of preference one, two and three. Once they've applied, they will uh, receive um, an acknowledgement from our um, student admissions office. This year, again, we wanted to clarify, we thought with um, the current situation, there is a lot of um, information out there with regard to um, predicted grades and interviews and offers for higher education. So we wanted just to let you know that in light of the current situation, this year we will not be holding um, interviews. All students will be given a, a conditional offer um, and um, those offers then are their places will be confirmed upon receipt of their um, grades um, in, as, as normal with um, the, on the 13th of August when they receive their A-level and B-Tech level 3 results. 
We just wanted to remind you about um, our upcoming webinars. They are going to be launched next week, um, Monday the 11th of May, and that is a series of webinars that are targeted at year 14 students and will provide course specific information on all of our higher education programmes. And we would encourage you to let your students know about those and then they can apply when they're in receipt of all of their information. We're also going to be delivering our higher education prospectus magazine um, and it will be delivered to all of the households in our catchment areas via a, a postal drop and that uh, it's anticipated that that will happen shortly. I'd now like uh, to give you the opportunity to ask some questions. Uh, you can do that via our question and answer panel um, and they can be submitted to um, my colleagues um, you'll be, who you'll be familiar with, Claire O'Neill from the Dungannon campus and uh, Nicola Malanothy from the Enniskillen campus and that can be done via the um, question and answer panel which can be found at the top right hand corner of your screen. Maybe I could just come in there uh, again. There was two questions yes. that came up uh, specifically for HLAs. And one was asking, was there an employer incentive? There's no financial incentive, but the incentive is that they get the high high level student. So normally they would take um, apprentices on at level two and level three, but they're now getting um, a higher education student, which is at a completely different level. So they're really like sort of technician level going on to management. So the incentive is they get that higher education student and the more mature student and feedback we get from employers is that's really working and they do notice the difference. Now they still will always need to take those level two and level three apprentices on, but just uh, different jobs in different companies um, and the, the response has been fantastic for the higher level apprenticeships. Uh, a second question was asked is where are the HLA jobs advertised that I refer to? There's none yet because there's no jobs available. Uh, but our plan is that if any employer comes to uh, the college and um, want to take on some HLAs, and as I referred to in my talk earlier, there was a guy talked to me just after um, uh, Christmas about taking somebody on. Now, what's happened since obviously has changed things slightly, but my plan is that I'm going to contact all the employers now um, in the month of uh, May or possibly the beginning of June. And if they're interested in taking somebody on, I will get them to put their, uh, you know, to complete their advert and I'll put it up on the website. So if somebody clicks in to, for example, business, um, they'll be able to see that a company is looking for somebody for a HLA in business. Now, we have no control at all whatsoever um, over what that employer does. They can increase um, the criteria. Like we may look for four GC GCSEs and blah, blah, blah. They can increase that uh, to, to their own choice and they have no control, but we will definitely, definitely work with them. And likewise, um, if if the students send me in their CVs, I can automatically send them on to, to companies and then they can choose um, who they want to interview. So hope that answers um, both queries there for HLAs. Thank you. Uh, can I just add to that, that as um, the careers advisors in the different campuses, we're very often um, contacted by employers um, who are interested in recruiting and in the interest of equal opportunities, those are always posted on the college uh, Facebook page. So it's um, worth students keeping uh, a wee eye on that page because that's where we will post those positions. Hi guys, it's Nicola here. Um, so I'm just going to answer um, one of the questions we've published. Can you explain what top up means? Um, so our top ups really are for students who have completed the foundation degrees. Now, um, some of our students haven't done the foundation degree. We'll, um, we'll leave it at that. And that's um, that's enough for them to get into the career that they hope to get into. But um, increasing numbers will go on and do the top up. So essentially it's the second and third year of the degree program, the full degree program. Um, so it gets you your full level six program. What top up degree you actually do will depend on what foundation degree you have done. So as Trisha mentioned during the foundation or during the um, presentation, each of our foundation degrees are created with two or three top up programs connected to them. And it's one of those two or three degree programs, those top ups that you will progress into from your particular foundation degree. So hopefully that can answers that. Um, Claire, have you anything extra to add to that? Um, I just want to say that um, the top up students complete their foundation degree and then it's a one year top up um, to, to their degree to finish off their degree. And those are offered through the Open University. So they're at level six and they're one year 
So instead of continuing on for two years, they do one year and that tops them up to their degree. And then with the Ulster University, it's normally the two years. So yeah, Teresa, you're right. Yes. One year for Open yes. University, two years for most of the Queen's and the Ulster University top ups. Yes. OK, is there any other questions or? OK, so uh, we'll wrap up there. Um, I'd like to thank you uh, for joining us this morning for our webinar and hope that it has been useful. Um, and we would uh, urge you to encourage your students to attend our webinars next week. So we'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, thank you so much and take care. <laughs>